Hello everyone. Let's have a look at one month in the life of Stephen King from October 14th to November 14th, 1980. King was working on two novels at once. Every morning he wrote six pages of the first draft of It, no more, no fewer. In the afternoons he worked on the second draft of Cujo, which he called a twisted tale about a boy and his dog. This fixed daily routine was the reason he was able to be so prolific, especially during the 80s. But the weeks around Halloween were busy ones for King, with many speaking engagements. He would talk for about an hour on the topic of horror. He had recently crystallized his views on the genre magnificently in Danse Macabre. It was scheduled for publication the following April, and he had just received his page proofs earlier on in October. On the 14th, King gave a lecture at the annual luncheon of Bangor's Young Women's Christian Association. As people helped themselves to food, King talked and graciously signed all the books people put in front of him. He mentioned he was working on the first draft of It, a story to be set in a town like Bangor, he said, complete with a standpipe, a central street, a main street and a fruit street school. In the lead up to Halloween, King was on the Dick Cavett show, on an episode that aired on the 16th of October. Joining him were two very good friends of his, George Romero and Peter Straub. King's collaborations with both were well underway at this point. With Romero he was working on Creepshow. The screenplay was done and production would start in 1981. King and Peter Straub's plans to write a book together were also becoming more serious. They already had the basic premise of a boy going on a quest for a talisman to cure his mother and were exchanging ideas for scenes at this point. They saw each other quite a bit that month and must have talked about the talisman often. In this interview, King also told an anecdote from his youth that he had just recently used in his first draft of It, the scene where young Eddie is in the shoe store with his mother. Um, I can remember, for instance, my mother, when I was just a, a little kid, they used to have these machines in shoe stores and you look down <laughs> into the machine and you saw your bones inside it, you know, in your mm -hmm. shoes. And, yes. and uh, I had my feet in one of those machines and uh, she gave a scream and said, uh, don't do that. that, that will give you cancer. And for weeks after, I would look at my feet to see if they'd started to rot yet, you know. And uh, I put that in a book, and I think one of the things that you do after a while is you, you begin to search out the things that scared you the most and try to get rid of them, you know. A week and a half later, King went to the 6th World Fantasy Convention in Baltimore, held between October 31st and November 2nd at the Marriott Hunt Valley Inn. He was one of the distinguished guests along with Peter Straub and Fritz Lieber. These conventions usually took place at big hotels. In the spirit of Halloween, the lady at reception was apparently dressed as a pumpkin. Fellow author Ramsey Campbell checked into the hotel at the same time and witnessed the look she gave King when he told her he had no credit card. Campbell wrote, I could think of no better introduction to a weekend of fantasy than the spectacle of the most popular author in the genre being suspected of insolvency by a lady pumpkin. On Saturday, November 1st, King took part in the panel session Horror in the 80s, still alive and well, with Peter Straub again and his agent Kirby McCauley. On Sunday, November 2nd, he received the prestigious convention award. Over the entire weekend, King drank many beers and signed many, 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 many books. A few days later, on the 5th of November, King was invited to give a lecture at the University of Georgia in Athens. His winter beard was well underway, and despite his bad cold, he gave a spirited lecture that was probably very similar to the one in Bangor. He got many enthusiastic questions afterwards. But I, two more questions, I think, and then will we'll... You, will you autograph my body somewhere? <laughs> no, just teasing. I'll autograph it everywhere! <laughs> and after that, he signed some more books. Just a week later, King was performing at the University of Iowa. He had been invited by David Morrell. On the evening of the 11th, King gave his lecture to an audience of over 600. This time round, he also read some stories, two pieces of work in progress. He read the storm drain scene from It with Pennywise and Georgie, and he also read from Pet Cemetery, a book he said that was too horrible to publish. The next morning he gave a group of 40 creative writing students the advice to read and write every day, and after that he signed some more books. From Iowa, King traveled back home. His engagements were over and he settled back into his daily routine of six fresh pages of the first draft of it per day, 
no more, no fewer.